Hello colleagues, I'm Brian Gilbert and I'm very excited that you're here today uh, watching this video because I am very passionate about the subject that we're going to be talking about. This is Happy Employees Do a Better Job. So first up, the disgruntled employee, the one that's just not satisfied, he's just not happy in his job. What does that cost us? First of all, they're more likely to steal from the company. They negatively influence co-workers. So they bring the whole morale of the whole facility down. They miss work days, which cost the company money. They drive customers away. How are you going to have a business without customers? They cost companies $450 to $550 billion per year. That is an astounding statistics of $450 billion to $550 billion per year because the employees are disengaged. They're just not happy in their work. So that's astounding facts there. Next up, so what do you do about this? How, how do you keep happy? Well, the old adage of you uh, choose a job that you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. We've all heard that, right? Well, that would be nice, but is it true? Let's take a quick look at uh, how many people have passion in music, arts, and sports? A whole lot, all the way up to here to 82% of us has a passion in music, arts, and sports. Of course, we like to watch football, we love to listen to music, a lot of us uh, play music, and a lot of us enjoy arts. We all have passion in that, so we should choose one of those fields, right? Well, that's gonna be difficult. Down here, you see we've got about 18% of actual jobs in music, art, and sports. So it's not as easy as the adage of choose a job you love and you have a, a You'll never have to work a day in your life. So it's just not that easy. So how do you add meaning to your work? Let's take the story of the bricklayers. Three bricklayers were asked, what are you doing? The first bricklayer says, I'm putting a brick on top of a brick. What does it look like I'm doing? So you can see he's justifying, he's doing a job, but he's not real happy about it. The second bricklayer, I'm making six pence an hour. That's what I'm doing. So you can see all these bricklayers are doing the same job, but each one of them has a different outlook on what they said. Let's take a look at the third person down here. I'm building a cathedral, a house of God. So you can see the third bricklayer had a much higher calling to what job he was doing. And that's how they looked at the same job, three different perspectives. Now, each one of them justified what they were doing, but we can pretty much guess the third one is the most happy in his or her job. So define one's own significance to the work. I work for the paycheck to provide for my family or outside interest. There is a lot of folks that just go in and do their time, get their paycheck so they can have what they want on the outside. They provide for their family and they do a lot of outside interest that they may have. And that's how they justify going into work every day and, and doing a decent job. Craftsmanship. I take pride in my work. We need a lot of these folks that really get into what they produce and then they have that end feeling of, I made this. This is my work. I'm proud of it. So that's how they get job satisfaction out of that. Or kinship. I just love the people I work with. I don't make a lot of money, but those are some of my best friends in that office. I enjoy going in every day and uh, hearing about their lives and their grandchildren and just uh, being social with my friends at work. Next up is I have a higher calling. I was born to do this. This reminds me of a zookeeper. Unfortunately, zookeepers don't make a whole lot of money. They feel they were called into that field, so they're going to deal with not making that much money. So they're satisfied inside, even though the salary is not there. So here's an employee trifecta. You must have each of these circles, engaged, happy, and motivated, equals the ideal employee. So that's what you get from here if you take these together and you'll get the ideal employee. So how about salary? Actually, it's not important. Job satisfaction is more important than salary. So if you, just like the zookeeper, if you're satisfied, your salary is not that big a deal. Of course, you've got to provide for yourself and your family, but it's not that big a deal in the overall scheme. Meaningful work is more important than job satisfaction. So more than just being satisfied with your job, 
meaningful work, you're happy to come into work every day, is more important than job satisfaction and your salary. I'll do anything for $100,000. I've heard this quite a bit. This is untrue. It doesn't matter if your salary is way, way high. If you're not satisfied with your job, you're eventually going to quit. And this has been proven over and over again. I've heard many people, uh, they can do whatever they want to me and pay me $30 an hour. It's just not true. On the surface, we think it is, but it's just not. So what makes us happy? That's work that's engaging. Work that helps others. Work that you're good at. Work with supportive colleagues. Work that meets your basic needs. Or work that fits with the rest of your life. And finally, your passion. So in conclusion, it is our job as HR professionals, as management, to put the right person in the right seat. We must match personalities and talents of the job that, they're, that fits them the best. This is how you create happy employees. This is how you create a company that's going to be profitable and move forward in the future. So the right person in the right seat is how we make happy employees. Happy employees equals profit. It's as simple as that. Uh, thank you very much for listening. This is my Works Cited page. And if you have any questions or, or critiques, please let me know. Thank you, class.